Okay. Hey, welcome everyone to Expansion, our podcast on personal development here at eXp Realty. And uh, my name is Glenn Sanford. I'm the founder of eXp Realty and uh, the, also the, the CEO and chairman of the board of eXp World Holdings. And today I'm really excited to speak with a, a fellow Canadian. Um, some of you may not know I'm from Canada, uh, wow. but I was born in Alberta, but uh, going to be uh, talking with uh, is it um, Amit or Amit? Amit, Amit, Amit Goyle. Goyle. Uh, and he lives up in uh, in Kamloops, uh, British Columbia, Canada, which is, um, I understand, a little bit snowy today. Yep. Amit. Uh, just a little bit. Not too bad. We had a few cars laid off the road, but... Oh, there you go. It's just, it's, yeah. it's the beginning of the season, right? It's like, mm -hmm. yeah, that, that's how you know there's the snow has showed up, that the, the first few cars have slid off the road. Yeah. Well, then the tire change is due now, right? So <laughs> there, there you go. And of course, uh, you got to have the chains probably if you're going to go drive to Kelowna or the Coquihalla or whatever, right? Yeah, there are some restrictions about just for public safety, you know. Yeah, nothing there, too, there you nothing go. Nothing too drastic. Yeah. Well, hey, um, so you, uh, maybe, um, maybe a minute, maybe you could just tell tell me a little bit about your background. How how did you end up getting into this crazy industry called real estate? <laughs> well, one, first of all, it's not crazy. It's very much needed. It's a, it's a, it's a very much needed industry. Uh, my background is highly from educational industry in the past. Uh, um, I've been fortunate to acquire several degrees through seven different institutions globally. And largely, I wanted to work in academia for all my life. Um, but uh, it was a great place to work, build a lot of good relations. It's a, um, you have a lot of respect and accountability and credibility in the market, but unfortunately not a lot of money, right? So, uh, so I always uh, wanted to and, and build some career. And uh, like, you know how the realtors never have to retire? Uh, academicians never have to retire really, and you can continue. So, so I, I, came to a crossroad at my life, say, okay, well, how else I can grow myself as an individual and, and as a professional and how can I make a little bit more money and not not having being broke all the time. So I made a decision to go uh, write my real estate exam at uh, UBC and, and, and take on. And so that's my background. And I chose real estate because I, before I started working for my last university, Thompson University here in Kamloops, uh, TRU, I had an opportunity to work with a realtor in Vancouver area and, and work for him and remotely even after. Uh, so, and so I got a good scope, right? You know what it requires to be a good realtor, a lot of hustle, a lot of looking after the clients. And that's my nature is to do, I, I want to be there for you kind of situation, right? And and help you out as much as I can. And we were very successful and he was able to get a medallion club that year as well. Uh, so so I, I kind of had a good feeling about it. He, he said, Amit, I think you will be great. He helped me out with this uh, registration and mentoring and, and you know, those uh, APC applied practice courses, right? uh in in through ubc so i mean overall he supported really well and here i am so and so that's that's how the transition happened and that's why transition happened oh awesome Thank now you. now when did you get your license like, like what, what year was that uh 2018 okay so fairly yeah. fairly recent actually yeah four years yeah okay and and um, what what attracted you to uh, to move your license over to EXP? What was it that uh, got your attention? Well, to be honest, I didn't know much about EXP until Gordon Ballantyne, my sponsors, uh, came. Hey, Amit, you your brokerage is in Vancouver. You work in Kamloops. Uh, I said yes. He said why? I said the broker is cheap. And then he said, well, then you, I have a cheaper option for you. I said, really? He said, yeah. And I said, there is nothing cheaper than free. And he said, no, you $139 is not bad. You are getting the whole system for this, which you're getting professional development for this. You are getting a mentor for this. And he started getting sweeter and sweeter. And then and the moment he threw, you're going to get shares and you get the ownership in this. I'm like, oh, oh, okay, hold on a second. <laughs> I'm, I'm, 
like I'm getting a whole lot in hundred and thirty nine dollars here. And and when I start, um, you know, understanding what these one hundred and thirty nine dollars gives me, it was just an easy switch. Uh, and and the biggest thing that I really strive for is the compliance and 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 accountability, right? And I think our systems uh, and our um, you know the revenue system as well as uh, uh, the systems operations it allows for that place to grow and 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 to be able to sustain. So I think that those were the really the motivating factor for me. The support system was not there for me before. And okay. so this, this really brought me to the EXP. So you were you were originally shopping brokerage based on price, it sounds like. Yeah. And then, then eventually um, you looked at the overall value proposition and it was the value prop uh, th- that you, you could see how over time you'd actually receive back more than 100% of your commissions generated just by plugging in and helping the company grow. Yeah. Well, not just that. It's like my commission volume, just 60000 to $300,000, 288 It's just, it's just. Uh, so so that, that's times, how, yeah. and that's how much has jumped since you've joined, uh, joined EXP, EXP is. Yeah. Wow. Well, congratulations on that. Thank I you. mean, that's no small, small feat. There's a lot of work that goes into that and obviously organizing. Speaking of which, you know, how do you, how do you generate your business? What's your, um, is it sphere? Are you doing uh, some sort of marketing campaign? How do you generate your business? Uh, you know, my coach, Dwayne Groom, you probably have heard of his name. Uh, he's in Alberta as well. Groom Real Estate. Okay. Yep. His, his daughter, uh, Amber, joined as well our company recently. Um, uh he always says you cannot operate like a secret service agent. So I got to do some marketing and promotion, but that also lets my previous clients in this capacity or customer to know that I build the network. Uh, when I work for, Tom, for example, Thompson River University, I brought in service over 10,000 students from Southeast Asia here, right? So South Asia rather. And then 10,000 is a lot of number. When I was quitting my job, I always thinking, okay, how I'm going to make money? And I said, well, if you were good enough, and even if 500 of those buy homes from you over the next 10 years, and you do the simple math, you know, 500 times $5,000, that's two and a half million dollars that at least you're going to guarantee to make even from worst calculation point of view. And I said, okay, well, if I get my job for $50,000, two and a half million dollars is a lot of money. If I put that together, that's 50 years of working. And I'm like, no, I, I, I think I, I'm making the right decision. And and thank goodness to, to all those the networks I was able to build and the relationship I was able to build. Uh, I still have a lot of those fan following. That's what I call them. And 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 I'm continuing to develop the network. They are just adding on. And and previously I was limited to working for the campus and because that's my scope of my job now, right? And now since I left, my scope is my my town, my community and 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 you know you guys always say keep doing the, all the successful things same time right so i keep ha- organizing these social events being part of our uh, diwali festival and serving food on the diwali festival just out there in the public uh, and and be the presence right and and that's uh, that's pretty much is the source of most of my business and the leads and the good work will prevail i hope and i get a lot of referrals from exp agents from vancouver surrey area and they said, okay, Amit, what's my deal? I said, as much yours. You want to take 50% or you want to take 75 And then they start laughing at it because, you know, it's uh, it's the truth, right? You know, whatever makes you happy, right? You know, it's in the same family. You need more, take more, <laughs> you know. And But uh, uh, most of them, they are, they are very kind to me. So, Oh, awesome. And, and now... You obviously you've increased your business quite a bit the last couple of years. You're you've been a two time icon, Thank you. Um, so congratulations on that as well. Uh, but when I think about how do you keep all of this organized? I mean, jumping, increasing that type of sales volume, uh, you're probably not doing it just keeping track of it in your head anymore. Um, no. How, how do you no. keep track of it? What CRM do you use? 
Oh, CRM wise, uh, honestly, I like to use uh, exec contact, pretty user friendly. Uh, my okay. coach says that's the best one he thinks. And I, you know, I'm part of his team. So I get to align my uh, systems and value proposition to his team as well. Right. And, and as long as and. I am still notebook and paper kind of guy. I, I take my follow up list every day, every second day. I refresh it. I follow up people, you know, keeping track. And and our system again allows us to do that marketing and promotions, right? So, and the boosting through Facebook and and yeah, I mean, I also have um, my general manager slash realtor in the making, Arjun Kadliwalam. He keeps lots of my things and promotions and events. Um, for example, we opened a Kamloop first time home buyer club, and I went on to online. There was no club like that. And, and and there were some other clubs like that in other parts of the world on Facebook. And we said, talk to Arjun. He said, yeah, there is nothing like that in Kamloops. Why don't we start? Now we are having monthly meeting. We have five or six people every time new and some regulars. Uh, the, when I say regular, they are also first time home buyers. So I don't even have to do much work. I just have to put them in front. I said, look, these guys are already successful, right? Do you want to do you want to know the success stories? Ask them. And if you want to know how can I help you buy and sell real estate property, then I'm here for you. But if you just want to talk about, uh, you know, the philosophical aspect of it, the stress part of it and so on. As I said, I because I have been part of the uh, same journey with most of these newcomers to Canada. Uh, I've been international student. I served them for so many years. I understand the the plight basically that they are taking at this moment right so it's very easy to relate and for me it's very comfortable to put some other first time home buyer in front of them saying because i'm not afraid of um, uh, them providing any negative uh, feedback or anything like that right it's just organically growing that culture and i think that's the that's the secret uh, how how i keep growing my network and and Yesterday, I was checking my notebook. I have like 27 names on the list to keep following up this week. So, so I mean, market Where, where's is your, Where's your notebook? Do you have your notebook with you? Oh, not right now. Oh, okay. I do have it. I'll take a photo and send it to you on Workspace. Not a problem. Okay. Yeah, I was just wondering. You know, sometimes no, no, I... for sure. You know, I do have my other notebook, but uh, I didn't want to bring my um, um, the heavy-duty one. Oh, there you go. Okay, well, yeah. So the big planner. So, yeah, and it's um, it's, a, it's a relationship business, right? It's a relationship business. So if if you were looking like uh, you've been in the business now for four years, five years, um, so what uh, if somebody was getting into the business today? What would you encourage them to to do or think about first? Ah, in first, okay. I think the first and foremost, uh, in my opinion, they need to realize that they have a license. They have to uphold the standards and the compliance associated with the license. And this is their business. It's not, they are not working for anybody else. This is their business. They're going to have to take the bull by its horn and take it further. They need to take control of the business. So, Unless they are part of a bigger team where a lot of support is available for them, which I find is counterproductive to being a realtor because you want to be a realtor to make more money and, and being able to. So I think they really have to make that transition from being an employee to an employer kind of. Right. And, and I think that that's a mindset and, and it's, a, it's an attitude thing. So once they take care of that within the next couple months, then they start making the stride and start thinking like, I need to be there for my client rather than myself, right? And and I think that's where the difference is. It's like almost like, you know, when a child becomes an adult, sorry, an adult becomes a dad, right? So, right. yeah, so it's a, sorry, I got a two little kids. So I think about those <laughs> things. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, basically, I think you're, you're saying that you have to become responsible for, right. The outcome, whereas yeah. maybe if you're an employee, you're really um, sort of doing the job that the manager tells you to do, and so you're not maybe at, using your creative problem-solving elements. And uh, 
And, and so if you know, you grew your business fairly quickly uh, in the last couple of years, um, what, uh, what would you recommend to someone in terms of trying to go from that, you know, 60, 70,000 a year production level up into that, you know, quarter million dollar uh, commission level? Is there, are some, there are some things that you did specific that took you to that next level? Well, I thought about this and then I, I saw this Barbara, uh, Barbara's uh, uh, quote somewhere. She's in Dragon's Den, I believe. Um, and, and she put it quite, quite well. It's kind of says that your something into the line, your ability to handling rejections. And then I added personally and objections will take you farther. So ability to handle rejection at your personal level, somebody rejected your services and so on and so forth. But at the same time, your ability to handle objections of your clients. So you can, you know, that's why EXP is great. We have objection handling technique courses like that, mm -hmm. right? And they are free. So if you master those skills, right? Um, Handling rejection is more like an attitude thing. So you got to fix your attitude, right, personally. But handling objection is a more like a skill acquired, right? So you got to, those who have ability to hand, handle their rejection and objection will go farther. That's, that's, right. that's what I'm going to say. Uh, because to me, that's going to be uh, more important since I read it now. And I told you now how I'm, because I think that's the area that I can improve myself is how I handle my rejection. I still have a lot of problem having a study in many places and being on academia and on Senate policy committees. And um, But uh, I think I still struggle with that part. So I think I'm going to work more on that. So well, I think we all struggle with that for sure. You know, no, it's um, uh, we when we know that we're providing a great product or service um, for somebody or the house makes sense or the listing strategy makes sense and they don't do business with us, it hurts. And yep. so, you know, how do we then, um, you know, not take it personally, but then recognize if we keep on hearing the same thing from multiple mm -hmm. people, then it's, um, it's, 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 we haven't handled that in a way that helps it helps them get over the hump. Um, yeah. I love, you know, the phrase, um, uh, th that I've heard many sales trainers, I think Tom Hopkins as well, which is the best time to bring a, a, to handle an objection is before it comes up. Yeah. And right. uh, so if you, if you, if you handle it before it comes up, they can't bring it up. So yeah. if you keep on hearing the same thing over and over again, um, then if you can handle that into just the dialogue, Hey, you know, um, just so you know, uh, you know, a lot of people in, and I'll just, one of my, the objections that I would get, or I don't, uh, um, I don't want to call it an objection, but I would have people come to the area for the first time we go out and look for a home. Uh, they couldn't find the home they were looking for. And then when they came back to town, they ended up using a different real estate agent when they did buy and uh, I figured out that there, there was an element there that I wasn't addressing. Um, and, and so what I figured out was that most of the time when they come to town, if they're not used to the, the community they're looking at, they have a different expectation in their mind mm -hmm. than what actually exists in the market. So mm -hmm. my, my script was, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Prospect, um, you know, I know this is the first time that you've been to Bellingham, Washington. Um, you know, today we're going to go out and obviously we're going to go look at homes, but let me just share with you that, you know, what I found is that most people don't, aren't able to find the property the first day when we go out because it doesn't match up with what they imagine exists in the marketplace. Um, now what, what will end up happening is you'll actually probably go through a little bit of a, um, uh, a, uh, an emotional downturn or, or might even get depressed about it, but that's actually a good thing because once you do that, then we can actually get realistic about the market and we can actually go find you your home. Yeah. And, and then, and so I do that up front. And then what ended up happening is they would, they would come back the next day cause they'd stay in a hotel or whatever. Uh, they, they'd be looking for a home and, and they go exactly as you said, we got depressed. And then we realized that it's the next stage is get realistic. 
And, uh, and so that literally doubled or tripled my conversion of out of town clients on the first visit, just with mm -hmm. that little script of handling the objection, um, that was going on in their own mind, which is we can't find the house that, that we want and does it even exist. And they had to go through that whole mental gymnastics. So that was one of my sort of favorite sort of objection handling techniques, um, yeah. in, in working with buyers. Yeah, and it's a lot of it is 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 improvement in your recognition, right? And is this is there this is where I mean, going back to my example of first time home buyer, and you know we had seven eight people, and I I said to Arjun, I said we only need one buyer, we only need one seller. If we have one a month, this lead generation process is fantastic. It's it's well way over than agent pronto or KV core one a month is 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 more than you can expect right so and and boom 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 we have three people who purchased they the oh we heard about this first time home buyer on Facebook and we want to buy a house one kid I mean Almighty God has to be so thankful and so generous to him and the family the the kid is I just went to see the kid yesterday my wife and my kids went to see her yesterday them and they bought the house in 13 days, Glenn, 13 days from seeing the house, getting the mortgage, uh, appraisal, appraisal called me for, for appraisal to happen on Sunday. And I said, no, their, their subject removal is on Thursday, which is tomorrow. And, and, and it's funny enough, I knew the appraisal. I gave Mrs. Appraisal a little, uh, you know, a and W card. Apparently, that happened to be their favorite breakfast place. And at one of the other previous visits, you know, I had a and W card. I say, I want to really thank you today. I don't normally see appraisers when I go around, but today I saw you. You do a lot of work in the community. Please go out and have a breakfast on me. And the same guy picked up my appraisal next time. He said, Amit, is that so? I'm coming over. Are you there? I said, no, I could be there in 10 minutes. He said, just wait for me. I'm coming. Appraisal done. They couldn't believe they got mortgage approved in three days. And I was like, wow, how did this happen? <laughs> well, well, that's awesome. Well, Amit, it's been uh, you know a lot of fun, obviously, chatting with you today. Um, uh, and uh, have we met in person yet? I'm looking forward to it. Okay, so we haven't yet. So I'm looking forward to that as well. Uh, for those of you listening, um, you can actually reach uh, Amit at facebook.com slash WWAKG. And you. Uh, you can also uh, uh, visit his uh, EXP Realty website at Amit Goal, G-O-E-L, at exprealty.com. And uh, thanks for sharing uh, some of those thoughts. Uh, I've, I've definitely uh, taken some mental notes. I'll write down some of those notes a little bit later today. And uh, again, congratulations on all of your success, Amit. Well, thank you, Glenn. It was a pleasure and honor to be in the room with you and and um, great motivation for trying to get to my third icon. So thank you.